Welcome to the Gentleman's Talk, where the podcast talks about a man's battle with mental health, his personal experiences, and his journey to be a better soul. Hosted by James Dean Littlejohn. Coming in now. James Dean Littlejohn joined the room. He's gone live. <laughs> Is Billy Miller coming in? Is Billy Miller? Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Gentleman's Talk. I'm just trying to, I've got a technical issue here. I'm just trying to s- establish if I can get Billy Miller to come in, uh, a friend of mine. Um, hopefully he's going to join us. I've just sent him an invite. Uh, I'm not sure why he's not joining us, uh, which is a bit of an unusual one. But uh, do we get these technical difficulties every now and then? Um, see if he's joining in, if he's joining in. Uh, engagement? No, it's not there. It's not there. The live show has started. Please join us. Fab. We're here. Billy Miller's joined the room. Billy Hello. In. Yeah, baby. You got me? I've got you, mate. I'm, 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 we're on. We're on. <laughs> How's it going, mate? Yeah, going really, really good, mate. I'm still in work. How are you? Yeah. No rest for the wicked, sir. No rest for the no. wicked. <laughs> Plenty to do today. Oh, good man. Good man. I was literally just jumping on. I've literally just walked through the door. I've had a, a very interesting day. Very positive day. Um, and I just wanted to talk about it, really. I was just jumping on top about it, but, uh, you know, you've, you've spurred the moment. You've really brought this, uh, you've brought this alive again, mate. I love it. After my cheeky comment to you yesterday saying I only get the notifications once the, uh, the live is published, which has been happening, my watch just buzzed and went, uh, gentlemen's talk, James Dean Lewis, you're going live right now. I went, right, I'm getting in on this. I mean, <laughs> love it, love it, love it, mate. <laughs> How's the day been, mate? Yeah, really good, mate. Um, I am, I am actually quite enjoying this new role of mine. I'm a, I kind of like to be the problem solver. I like to be the the helper, should we say? Yes, good. Yeah, I do know about you. You you always go above and beyond. Sometimes things are a little bit, you know, frustrating and what have you. But apart from that, mate, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting my feet in the door and and cracking on, you know. Yeah, good mate. Uh, but, but I and if you you're you're a bit like me, you like to you, I like a challenge. I like to see something that's you know. And we spoke yesterday with regards to not having a handover, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, and it's really kind of interesting that that is frustrating, that is difficult. But you know, you're a problem solver, so you know, if anything, it's just something you'll thrive on, really. I um. So I've got my sad lamp rigged up in my office. Oh, fab. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's on from the, so it's right next to the little radio. So when I switch the radio on, I switch the, the sad lamp on and I had someone come in today and went, Oh, is that a sad lamp? And I went, yeah, do you know about it? And they were like, yeah, yeah. I went, wow. absolutely fantastic. So, you, you know, people were knowing about these things and these, you know, little tiny things that make a massive, massive impact. It, 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 it really does. And that's how we got talking. Do you know what I mean? That's how literally seeing that sad lamp. It, and you, if you, nine times out of 10, if you know someone's got a sad lamp, They've got it for a reason. And if you've researched it, you've got it for a reason, you know. So it's a really good topic opener, isn't it? And it kind of like, yeah. you know, it kind of, you know, for a fact, then instantly you're going to, you know, probably gel this person because they're going to be relatable straight away. So you've got something in common before you even start talking, haven't you? Oh, big time. And, and you know, for those that are listening that, that don't know what a sad lamp is, don't. I know what you're picturing. You're picturing uh, a, a, a round like a moon type thing with a, a sad face, a little rainy face with a tear coming out. That's not what it is. It's yeah. <laughs> um, se- <laughs> seasonal affective disorder, I believe what it is. That is and correct. It's, yes. It's when you just don't get enough, uh, you know, natural sunlight, natural light. And um, so I've, uh, I've moved uh, countries now and um, the country that I mean, it, it's it's known for its miserable weather. And yep. last time I was out here, I got, um, I was just really miserable. I was just, you know, really, really bad because I was getting up really early. It was still dark, going to work. There was an office, no windows. I was sitting in the office doing stuff. And then I'd finish work and it'd either be raining or I'd finish work, be late and it'd be dark. I weren't getting enough light. So I got this sad lamp absolutely fantastic. And I'm now absorbing its goodness yes. every single day. 
Absolutely, mate. <clears throat> and they say, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat, my fro- thro- frog in my throat. And they do, and, and do you know what, mate? I've got the same. I've got one in my bedroom and, um, you know, I bang it on just before bed just to get that vitamin D because it is something that we, um, we lack in, 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 in the UK anyway. Um, but especially in the country you're in, like you said, it's, it's even more prevalent because it is quite, uh, you know, it's a rainy, it's a rainy country, isn't it? Yeah. But. Oh, it is. But yeah, not but this weekend, though. No. The sun was shining and uh, I ended up a little bit crispy. Crispy and tipsy. <laughs> oh, well, I wish tipsy. It was working, wasn't I? So, oh, of course. Uh, yeah, so not too... Well, I think I had four cans. Uh, you know, once I finished, I four thought, right, okay, I'll have a quick... Four cans of d- d- dragon soup, mate. <laughs> oh, God, mate. I'm never touching that stuff again. <laughs> you've, got, you've got slabs of it. Did you take it across with you? No, mate. I t- and this is a true story now. So, you know, um, this isn't a dig, by the way. Okay. You know the leaving do that I had that you um, didn't turn up to? Yes, that's a dig. Go on. Yes. So <laughs> we got back or once the, you know, midnight had hit and the bars were shut. Yeah. Two of us went back to my house. And of course, that was the only thing that was left in my house as the uh, as the movers had taken everything. So they got cracked open. Uh, wow. And I introduced a few more people to Dragon Soup, yeah. Wow. So there was some yeah. fucking sore heads the next day then? Well, no, because because Dragon Soup uh, is very much like everything, delicious in moderation. Oh, did you go for the moderation um, rather than the way that you did it with me where we absolutely fucking got destroyed? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. a can and a half, just about right. That is, you know, if you've already had a night out, you've already had a few bevies, a can and a half, just to, you know, keep keep you the conversation going. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Four to five to six cans, definitely not. It's a big no no. Oh, it's a definite no no. That's a that's a bear with a sore head for a good couple of weeks. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes. Oh god, mate. Yeah, like I say, you know, it's it's um it helps, doesn't it? It helps to loosen you up, but that's a bit of a difficult, uh, it's a bit of a difficult drink that. I'm not going to lie to you. It's my first experience and it will be my last. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was utterly destroyed for about two or three days. Right. But anyway, it draws me on. It draws me on and, and you're perfect to listen. So. And talk actually. So as you well know, I'm one of these ones that, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to put it in my terms. I kind of struggle a little bit with regards to meeting new people and putting myself into new situations. I do a little bit, which I, as you probably know, it, it's hard to believe because I am quite an outgoing person. Um, and this is the thing, mate. This is the thing is it, it, it kind of, it, it's hard to comprehend, mate. I know. For, for those listening that have never met you, you, you know, you are so outgoing. There's always a smile on your face 90% of the time. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're, 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 you're just a really nice bloke. And, and when I hear about, you know, your, the way you, that you kind of get anxious and stuff like that when these scenarios pop up, it just baffles me. It's like, I know. wow. And, and, and that's the thing, mate. And, you know, like you keep saying to me, mental health doesn't give a, Fuck. S-H-I-T. <laughs> Don't give yeah. me, it doesn't. It, and do you know what, mate? And even me, I, like from my side of things, it's absolutely frustrating because what I'm one of these people. When you get to know me, I'll do anything for you. I'll fucking listen to you. I'll help you. I'll research things for you. I'll make things for you. I'll just make your life happy because I'm like, that makes me happy. But yeah. When yeah, you chuck me into a scenario where I don't feel comfortable, um, I just break down, mate, I, I, to the point where I'll come up with fucking ridiculous excuse. I've been invited to this week to go to um, to go to a self-defense class with with a friend of mine. And it, well, you know, I, I know him. And in fact, you know, him, Andy Walker. Yeah. So he's, yeah. he's struggling a little bit and he's invited me to a self-defense class now, awesome. gen- which is like absolutely amazing. The downside is um, I can't go to it because I'm not insured, supposedly, because I'm not a member of AASN anymore. So supposedly I can't go to the gym and use it because I'm not a gym member. So if I tell him that, though, he's probably going to think, fuck off, mate. You've just chinned me off again. 
But in actual fact, I wouldn't mind doing it because he, he, he messaged me at the weekend and he's proper struggling. He's come off Facebook. He's, he, he was really struggling with work. He doesn't understand why people are like trying to shit on him at work and all that. So I really wanted to be there. And I sort of said to him, look, mate, I'll come over and we'll have a, we'll have a walk or something, you know, just get out and about. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, he said, I'll oh, come to this fucking, um, come to this self defense class. I need someone to go along with. And I was like, what time is it? He's like half 12 to half one. I was like, fab. I'll come along, mate. Um, it's only an hour. I'll get onto camp. Um, which I know is a bit difficult because fucking, you know, Peter took my fucking pass off me. But anyway, I was going to go through it. And anyway, I, obviously, because I know, um, what's his name? The short guy in the gym that's a, I can't remember his fucking name. You, you remember him? Craig. Craig, that's it. Um, I, mas- I messaged him on, um, on WhatsApp and I was like, dude, can I come along to this? And he was like, you can, but you're not insured. And if I get caught, I might potentially lose my job because you're not part of AASN. You're part of DIO and your main headquarters is Marlborough Lines Andover. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, not worth it then, mate. Not even So worth I was it. like, but how do I, t- but how do I tell Andy that without upsetting him even more? Somebody who's already low, somebody who wants that interaction, that male interaction without seeming like a fucking arsehole again. Well, mate, the thing is, you've already you've already responded to it. Listen, let me come down. We'll go out for a walk. We'll go and do something else. You've got you've got to be honest with him and say, listen, if you don't believe me, then just just go and ask the guy, and he'll tell you exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Let's do something else. Yeah, exactly. And what I was going to do is any message him today and say, look, I can't come along because of X, Y, and Z. However, do you is it imperative that you go to this uh you know to this this self defense class, or do you want to chin that? off to the following week and we'll go for a walk so we, we get that interaction with someone to talk to and I think that's probably no, no, the way no, no, I'm going to play do that, mate. Don't do that because if you say to him do you want to chin that off he's he's already probably put himself out of his comfort zone because he's yeah. made the first step to go to this um, self defence class yeah. and don't say I'll oh, chin it off chin it off he wants to go he's made that first step so of, I need to you know, make potentially a- making a lifelong uh, new hobby or something, you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Of course, and I so I need to make an alternative, which is probably yeah. going to be either going up to see him on Friday afternoon, um, or which is probably an easier way of doing it because I normally finish work at midday anyway. It's going up to see him and saying, yeah. "Look, finish work at midday, mate, and we'll go for a fucking long stroll, and we'll just put the world to rights and hopefully make you feel better for the weekend." Definitely, mate. So or that- or even strap your bike to the back of the. Uh, to the back of your car. Yeah. Um, because he, he said to me before, he's, we wanted to get into um, mountain bike. He's got a mountain bike. He rides around the fields and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. even just a ride with him or something like that, mate, I don't know. But um, yeah, don't don't get him to chin off, you know, you know his his activity. No, because he can't he, make he's, it. He's, he's like you said, he, rightly so. He, he's probably pushed himself, pushed his boundaries to go there. So, um, and you know what it's like. It's one of those things. If you don't do the hobby, like, you know, if you don't go shooting, you'll never know what it's like until you go there and you have a fantastic time. He might have such a good time. It turns, like you said, into a long term hobby for him. Yeah, big time. Um, but, and, and, and sort of drawing back, we digress a little bit there. For, rightly so. It's nice to digress. I always do. Um, but yeah, it was interesting what I was saying. You know, I get this anxiety and, um, uh, to be honest, mate, I don't fucking know why I get this anxiety. I really don't. It's horrible. And I've let so many fucking people down in the last fucking year that it's like I need to get over that barrier. And it's like it's weird. I don't know whether I, I look at it because like if you had said to me, let's go for a beer. Absolutely no fucking problem at all. But if you said to me, let's go for a beer and fucking there's going to be loads of people there. I'm like, uh, and, I, and I, I tend to get that little bit. And, and it's really weird because here I am now. Um, you know, absolutely fucking talk. Yeah, oh, cheers, mate. I've just seen that pop up because my thing was on the screen. Um, because for me, it's really, it's really, it's, it's an awkward situation and I don't like doing it. And my brain actively takes over. It gets to the point where I can methodically write down an excuse to not go. And it'll be such a like lock tight excuse that you can't challenge it. Cause if you challenge it, I would make you look an arsehole. And I don't do that intentionally. But I make it such a solid excuse that I'm like, that's the way it goes. And I need to get over that barrier. And, you know, the the reason I jumped on here uh, is because of a, a massive positive story to that. And today I drove up to um, I drove up to I was on a team building day now, got massively taken out of my zone and got told that um, about 15 minutes before attending, that I didn't have to be there. But I was like, I've driven an hour and a half. Two, nearly two hours to get here and I was in a room where I didn't know anybody there was like 30 people there it was 
like going in with all the sort of top hob knobs and all this sort of stuff and just having a team building day. And I was like, fucking hell, this is going to be shit. This is absolutely going to be shit. And I was sat there. I didn't have like low expectations of it, but I kind of had, I didn't have any expectations. I was just like, I'm going to go here. I'm going to tick the box. It's for work. I'm going to get recognized. People are going to know that I've gone above and beyond. So I kind of had a, a bit of a hidden agenda that was career minded, career focused. Yeah. But what a fucking day I've had. Like literally to the point where I had to talk about it so that I can reinforce it as a memory because I went there, I was interacting with people. Um, the whole team, the whole day was built around collaboration, collaborative working, um, and understanding the, the, the six fundamental basics to, uh, you know, uh, nurture in a good work environment. And there's two organizations, the organization I work for and working in, in partnership with this other organization. So for me, it was like, it was out of my comfort zone. It was people I didn't know. Do I really fucking care? Probably not. I didn't this morning at, at nine o'clock. I didn't give a shit. I was just going to be there to get the free food, a cup of tea and go home. But we did team building days and it was absolutely fantastic to the point where I was I was openly dragged up the front and asked to do a presentation off the cuff. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I sort of excelled. I felt like my old self again. And and. I was, I was, I was jibbing away and everyone was like, oh, he means business. And everybody was, cause my name's James Dean. So everyone was fucking loving it. And I turned this, we had this little team building exercise that involved what I thought was competition. You had, um, you had to build a jigsaw puzzle. They gave you two pieces and you had 88 questions between three teams. And at every question you got right, you got a new jigsaw puzzle piece. So. Right. For me, that was like, oh, OK, you know, this is going to be a bit fucking crazy. You know, it's going to be all right. But I turned it into a male bravado situation. So I instantly went um, competition head on. Let's get as many yeah. answers as we can. Let's get this puzzle yeah. built so we can fucking win. And we were a male dominated group as well, which didn't really help because all of us were sort of, you know, kind of we were all managers. So, you know, what it's like when you've, you've got seven managers on one team, everybody thinks they're the fucking big I am. Um, yeah. Obviously, it depends on who shouts loudest, and I've got a loud voice. So I went up to the uh, woman, to, and I was the answer person. And I went up to the woman, and I said, "Right, this is the answer. I've got five in a row. Bosh, bosh, bosh." And she, and then I went back and asked another five, ran back up, and she was like, "James, what are you doing?" And I was like, "It's a fucking competition." And she was like, "No, mate, stop." And I went, "What?" She goes, "Go and have a chat with this another group." And I went to chat with these two women that were over there. And they gave me a completely different aspect. They said, no, this is about collaborative working. This is what we should be doing. So I literally stood up in front of everyone, stopped the room and said, right, everybody, the questions are the same. Once you've answered them, we get one piece, but the other two teams can't answer that question again. So we are all answering one to ten. So it was a case of I thought it was a competition. Who could answer the fucking an who can answer the questions quick enough? But it turned in if we all work together as a team and we would all get the pieces in the end. So it was kind of like completely spun me around because I'm so competitive. I went straight to competitiveness and went, fuck everybody. I'm going to I'm going to get the pieces. We're going to win. And in actual fact, there was more out of it for exactly me. I was laughing my ass off. And the woman there, the, the facilitator who was organizing everything, she turned around and she was like, mate, you need to fucking slow down. I was like, no, it's a competition. She was like, no, it's not a competition. I was like, fucking is. There's there's 88 questions and 54 pieces. I need to get them for 54 pieces. <laughs> and in the end, she said to me, James, right, you're running out of time. And I went, yeah. And she went, what are you going to do to acknowledge that there's where well, you're running out of time? And I'm going to put I put all the rest of the jigsaw puzzles in piles of five. So in the next two minutes, if you answer the questions quick enough, you'll get a pile rather than one piece. So I just fucking went straight up. She went, you need to sort this out, James. And I went. Obviously, bearing in mind, this is massively out of my comfort zone. I stood up and went, right, everyone, announcement. And they all turned and looked at me and I said, right, the jigsaw puzzles are the same. We've all got duplicated pieces and, and we're trying to find slots. And what are you doing with your spare pieces? So I said, right, let's concentrate on getting two jigsaw puzzles built. And the third one will concentrate as a, a, a full team and we'll put all our pieces together. And by the way, if you get a team, a half of us go and answer the questions and half of us build the uh, build the jigsaw puzzle. Those questions, every time you answer a question, you get a pile. And we we smashed it in four minutes. What took us 45 minutes, we finished in four minutes. And we were two minutes over the allotted time. So 
it was interesting for me out of my comfort zone stood there fucking shouting can i ask what the, what was it in the jigsaw um they were all the similar it basically it was uh it was the it was the six fundamental um so the easiest way to say it is um integrity respect um and there was loads of the i can't remember them all um but they were all of the building blocks of what the um what the building block of the business was so values, va- values and standards no not baked beans mate <laughs> i fucking wish it was i'd have chewed them down <laughs> But it was interesting how I came out of my comfort zone to do that and, you know, get the results. And in the end, I actually came away and I, I walked up to the manager who organized it. We got free food. They put like six pounds um, for each meal. And there was like 30 of us there. So it was quite well, it was well done. We had teas and coffees all day. And I went up to the facilitators and I was like, thank you so much. And they were like, no problems, James. And I was like, you know, how did you find that? I was like like bigger than you realize because for me this the only reason i came here today is because it's work related if it had been nothing yeah. other than work related i would have fucked it off and even so if i could have fucked it off and you just said to me i didn't have to go i wouldn't have gone i'd have just gone nah, i'm not gonna do that but in yeah. actual fact meeting all those people face to face was it was absolutely amazing and i felt I, i've come home like i'm high on drugs do you know what i mean that's how well i feel wow it is. It is like literally. What, to me, listening to you, mate. Right. The beginning of this this conversation was you're so um, you're so annoyed, frustrated with yourself that you you get these feelings when something's planned. Yeah. Well in advance, and you build it up, build it up, build it up, and then you go, no, no, I can't go, I can't go. I feel it's too much. Yeah. Whereas you've just told me off the cuff. Someone yep. said, get up, talk, etc." You, your leadership, your natural leadership came out. Uh, you then, you know, you were in front of everyone. Um, you, you know, turned it around once you got explained, you know, what the support all about. You then turned it around and said, hey, listen, collaborative, let's sort this out. We can. And you were solving problems there and then with what I'm going to imagine or what it sounds like. No issues at all. It, it You know, it really wasn't. And um, yeah, same as. Um, uh, what you just put there, Angie, is it, or is it Ange? Ange? Sorry, Ange. Um, my worst fear is those team building things. The most anxious I get, uh, and Angie, th- all right, not, sorry, Angie. Um, the more anxious I get, the more I tend to babble and rubbish. Well done. I, no, I appreciate it. And like, you know, Billy, Billy knows me really well. So um, in, in such a short space of time. And if you do build it up, you've hit the nail on the head, mate. I, it's, it's weird because I like to plan. I absolutely love to plan. Because for me, planning is good. Um, and then I kind of the reason I like to plan is because I like to build myself up. But what it transpires is actually the build it up bit is the is the negative bit is the bit where I go, OK, well, I've got plenty of time to think of a fucking excuse. And I can say yes, yes, yes. Right until a couple of days before. But I literally found out about this yesterday that I was coming up today and I was like, oh, fucking hell, it's work. I'm just going to go and do it. And. Yeah, right. So the, the natural ability for me came out and I had a thoroughly good day. Like I was engaging with people. I was I was, I was having conversations. I was we, I, there was a queue of people trying to answer the questions. And I literally in front of everybody knocked into these two women and went, get out of the way, you know, like in a banter way and try, you know, it, it just turned into a fun event. And yeah, right. It, it really is interesting how your mind works. And I think that Unfortunately, with mental health, like you said at the start, it, it, you don't get a say in anything to do with mental health. Like, you know, you can be brilliant one minute and then the next minute you can be absolutely destroyed. Um, and I know that of uh, uh, 10 years, you know, even my wife said, I'm, I'm like I said in, pod, in previous podcasts, I'm like Jekyll and Hyde. I, I really am. Like, you know, if you get me to the point where I'm, I'm, I'm Hyde and sorry, Jekyll, I'm all right. I mean, you know, I'm not bad, but oh, whichever way it is. But when I'm the other version, I'm just an angry person. And to the point where if, if you'd have said to me, Billy, like you, you come into your do, come into my do, come into my do. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if I didn't go and you were like, fuck's sake, mate, you've let me down. I know for a fucking fact I'd have just gone, fuck you then. Fuck you. You're not worth it. And that's the angry, stupid side of me that I'm trying mm. to fucking battle against. It's horrend- I hate it. I really I can't emphasize how much I hate the fact that I'm like this. It, it's not me. It's never been me, but it seems to have developed over these years. And, you know, six months ago, I made I made the, the the executive decision to go fucking stop it, mate. You're missing out on 
golden opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and like Andrew just said a minute ago, her her worst fear is those team building things. When she gets anxious, she she babbles rubbish. Now we're, I think everyone's the same as that. If we see, if we get a questionnaire and there's a blank box, you you don't just leave it blank. You put something in there just for the sake of it. And yeah, the same as you know, if if you're anxious and there's a you know someone's not talking, you go, well, I suppose I. I best talk. I best say something just yeah, to yeah. just to you know fill the silence, fill the gap, fill the void. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and and you know it, it, that anxiousness, that uh, nervousness, uh, it it just it's it spoils a lot of things. You know, when yeah. you in your head, you've got a lot of good stuff to say, and and uh, and sometimes you just you just end up saying more and that's why uh what is it they say sometimes less is more when you sometimes yeah and i used to do that at work everyone used to say to me you know you're going down a, a rabbit warren james shut up and i'm like fuck i just need to fill the void i'm anxious oh god someone needs to say something and then you, you would unpick it or you would get to the point where you put yourself in such a pickle that you just make yourself look stupid and then you get more anxiety and you kind of don't move past it. It just, if anything, it just gives you more negativity and you, yeah. you, you tend to turn everything into a negative. Um, but you, but listen, but you, you know, your, your catchphrase, I digress. I dig I love you it. Do. You just go off on a tangent, didn't you? Because I, may I do it, but my brain, it's really hard. I th- and I, and I've, I'm establishing now it's because of the uh, the ADHD aspect of me. It's because I don't fi- I, I fixate on I don't fixate on one conversation. Like if you're talking, like when I'm talking on this podcast, I'm not looking at the podcast. I'm not really thinking about the podcast. There's a little tiny aspect of my brain that is fucking diverting off somewhere, and I'm yeah. looking at other things. And I'm going like just a minute ago, I'm playing with the the spare mic, and I'm just sat here and you're talking and then all of a sudden you can carry if you say a certain sentence my brain will um actually go uh, i don't want to move past what you're saying because i want to acknowledge that now do you know what i mean yeah and just to address um andrew there my husband said that about me he never knew what he was coming home to i was either on a high or on a floor and do you know what andrew i can fully one i've i've got some hair raising stories about you know the things i'm absolutely ashamed of you know um and, and things that the mental health side of things never really gave me um the ability to sort of kind of understand what i was saying and i remember there's a there's a story that sticks in my mind uh, we came back from southampton one day with my wife and we'd had a really good day but i was tired i was stressed i was in a situation at southampton that was just overpowering because mental health side of me I don't deal with noise very well so I kind of go into a little bit of a kind of protective zone and I remember walking in and I was so stressed out that I didn't know how to control it that I turned around to my wife and and this is going to make I'm going to say it because I have to acknowledge it but I turned around to her and I remember screaming and shouting at my wife and saying her you are just a c-u-m-t and I said you're an yeah, absolute. You told me about this, yeah. Yeah, I and I said you're an amazing mother, but you are a fucking awful wife. And you know, for me personally, that was the most crippling point. And and it doesn't matter what you do or what your excuse is. When you say those golden words that come out your mouth that you know is going to break someone down, you can never undo that. And then no. be t- you know that then there'd be times where I came in the door and I'd go to bed for three hours in the afternoon. She'd be like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm going to sleep, mate." And I just couldn't control myself, you know. And you know, yeah, it's gone. You ain't exactly. You've spat it out. You've upset them already. You've said those fucking words. And I'm a very open and honest person. But for me, it's the same. I feel absolutely awful when I let you know those times I've let you down, Billy. I, I, I'll never forget. I'll never forget them because for me, that isn't me. And the blessing in the disguise for me is you've seen the good side of me because we've clicked as our friendship group, you know. So you get to see the positive side of me. But at the same time, there is a dark side to me. And that's the dark side I try to uh, uh, try to avoid. What's that? Just to say I'm divorced now, but we get on as friends well. And do you know what? Nine times out of ten, that's the case. Sometimes you I mean, I, I've I've been very, very, very fortunate um, that my wife has stuck beside me. Um, I, I've been very lucky. And do you know what? I since I've bettered myself and I'm on a positive uh, a positive journey this podcast has helped me out and and I'm blessed with very very good friends 
Um, I have absolutely, I dote on her now. I literally, you know, whatever I can give her, whatever I, just to undo those 10 years. And I still get bad days. Christ, there's fucking days where, you know, she, normally the, the downside to mental health is that night that I let my mate down, Billy, on his, on his, uh, you know, on his sort of kind of leave and do, which was like a big event. I know what the leave and do events are like. I should be there. I should have been there. I'm a good fucking friend. But when I wasn't, do you know, the person who took the brunt of that was my wife, because I was sat there. I was anxious. I was angry with myself. And she would talk to me. What do you want anything? And I'd be like, fuck off, leave me alone. You know, and it was you don't realize that that is just what triggers you. Yeah, but listen, right. So this is this is the difference between um, people who bottle it up and don't say anything yeah or uh, sorry not or and those people that um have these fantastic friends around them that they can be open and honest with yeah which is like you keep saying something that us guys struggle at we struggle to be open and honest and talk yeah um but yeah and and you know you've your wife gets it and, oh, and she, she gets it now you've explained it to her and so so whereas and let's go back to me and you right so whereas if, if i never knew you like i know you now yep. and you never opened up to me and explained stuff and everything like that right after i don't know second time maybe that you've gone that you either haven't turned up or lay or miscommunication i would have gone i don't even worry about it mate and and not spoke to you yeah and just you know not invite. but I get it. You have been so honest and on the plate and laid everything out and said, listen, mate, sometimes this is what happens. This happens to me. This is how I feel. This is it's not just you. It's it's something going on in my head. It's the way I feel, blah, blah. And I can't manage it, my body. My brain just won't let me do that. And yeah. if I do do it, I'm going to be there with a sad face on miserable face. I probably won't enjoy it. You won't enjoy my company anyway. And that's a thing. And, and but when we have this great, fantastic support network around us of people that one care, yep. they actually care about you. Yeah, exactly. And two, they understand. Then it's all good. You know what I mean? Like you never, you never came to my leaving do. Do you know what, mate? You probably would have been sat there just annoyed but, anyway. You told me your reasons. But what did I do instead? Well, you came round. I came round uh, personally, gave you a cuddle, uh, and gave you a yeah. bottle of champagne and some flowers for your wife. That meant more to me. Cuddle was a bit too long, if I'm honest. It was oh. a bit... Uh... <laughs> Piss off! <laughs> <laughs> but it is for me, like, it, it, you know, it's the personal touch. And do you know what? I think the absolute, the absolute turning point to me being a better person was being open and honest with the people that I know genuinely care. So I'll walk down the stairs now. And if I've not had a, if I'd have a, a bad sleep or I've, uh, I've, I've been overthinking during the night, I walk down now and I openly say to my wife, I say, I'm not having a good day. And she'll, do you know what she does now? She openly tries her best to make my day positive. Even when I look there and I'm miserable as fucking sin, she'll be like, James, do you want a cup of tea? Or oh, she'll come back with like a bar of chocolate and a, a four pack of ciders. And she'll be like, go and enjoy yourself in the gardens where you like being happy. And that to me is nurtured because I've been honest. And exactly with you, I know for a fact that we can move past things because it is getting better. I'm getting better. So I know that this isn't long term. You know, I know for a fact that for, for me, if you said to me, James, fucking come over to Ireland on this weekend, I would fucking come because I'm coming to see you. And that to me would be worth its weight in gold, you know. And um, do you know the biggest thing, uh, the, 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 the most special thing for me was, number one, opening up, being honest, saying that I have these problems because for, for, for nine, ten years, I didn't. I just hit, I just bottled them up. I mean, the first four years of the mental health problems, just as I was being diagnosed with PTSD and depression, the first four years, everybody just thought I was fucking crazy. And they were just, I mean, I remember my mum and, you know. Yeah, but I got, to, you thought you were fucking crazy as I well, did. didn't you? I did. I, mate, I went fucking mental because my mum said to me, I, I, went, I remember going to my mum and I said, mum, there's something fucking wrong with me. And she turned around to me and says, it's not depression, mate. You're not depressed. You're too fucking happy, smiley, confident to be depressed. And I was yeah. like, I was like, oh, okay then. And then I, 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 when I upped and walked out my fucking house one day, and I left for six months. And bearing in mind, I've got three daughters. I just up and fucked off. The first thing my mum said to me was, "You're only doing it to have an affair." 
I was like, no. I, yeah, my mum, I remember phoning my mum and I was outside this house that I'd rented. I'd left my wife. I'd left my three children. I left my three dogs. I just fucking walked out. I could not, because I couldn't cope with being the angry bastard that I was. I could not fucking cope with that. I was like, there's, all I'm doing here is I'm angry. I want to fight everybody. I just want to fucking kill people. That's where I got to. And I just thought the only way I can deal with this is by going living on my own and trying to sort my shit out because I don't understand how to deal with mental health. And I phoned my mum and I was outside the front and my mum said to me, I, I phoned her, I said, I was bawling my eyes out and bearing in mind, I'm a fucking bloke. You know what I mean? I'm like, you don't normally cry, even to your mum. You don't show, show emotions. I, I don't anyway. And she said to me, son, I'm not fucking interested. And I remember the conversation to the day. She said to me, son, I'm not fucking interested. You've only left so you can have a fucking affair. And I went, have a what? And do you know what, mate? I left and that was the loneliest six months of my fucking life. And oh. Because I shut myself away from absolutely everybody. And I remember walking around Asda the next day on my own, buying shopping for myself. It, it, do you know what? I can't, I'm not going to talk too much because it does upset me about that is what, the way I was dealt with. And even my dad went, I said to my mum on the phone, I said, you can just fuck off. And then my dad rang me up and went, don't talk to your mum like that. I said, you can fuck off as well. And that's where the conversation went. I was like, nobody. And, and everyone came back to me. And it was about three years later that my dad said we were that we went. We finally started talking after a year of not talking. And he said, nobody could believe that you've got depression. Nobody could believe you've got a mental health concern because you're so outgoing. And I yeah. said, and, and as you said, what, only 20 minutes ago, when you get to know me, I am an outgoing, fun person that will do anything for you. But I am battling you battle so much that you don't fucking see. And there's times where I get, I mean, I was driving home today and I get anxiety because my, my, you know, my PTSD was caused by car crashes. And I was going along the motorway, just sat there, cruise control, happy as Larry. And some old guy didn't indicate, but went to pull in front of me and fucking started sending me up the barrier. And then I looked to the left and he's fucking sticking his fingers at me, thinking like he should have just pulled out without indicating. And I, all I wanted to do, the only thing I envisioned was I want to pull him over. And I'm going to beat seven shades of shit out of him. That's all just to teach this fucker a lesson. And that's the bit that I try to avoid getting to. And chimp paradox. That mate, mate, I was, chimp paradox. I was literally, I, yeah. And do you know what? I didn't feed the angry chimp. chimp. I sat there because I, I put the window down and I, he was with his, he was with his, he was, he was elderly. He must've been sixties and he was giving me fingers and all this. And I was looking at him smiling with this, with this really sadistic smile that I do. I know I do it. And I, 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 I <laughs> that was looking. chimp wanted a banana though, mate. That chimp was hungry right mate, then. Mate, it was fucking, because I was tired as well. I was a little bit hangry, hungry and angry. And I looked at him and I told him to pull over. And his and his wife knew that I, I wasn't fucking around. I told him to pull over. I was giving him the pull over thing. And if he'd have pulled over, I know what I'd have done. I, even though I'm in a fucking senior position in my career, I'd have chucked it all away because that's where my mental health goes. I was willing, and I actually, inv in my head, was envisioning punching his fucking side window in and just and bouldering into his face, just to go, fucking don't do that again. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I put it to bed, and I fed that, not the angry chimp, I fed the happy chimp. I put the music up a little bit louder, and I just concentrated on the view in front of me. And do you know what? That's a progression for me, a massive, massive progression. So... Very similar story. I was on the camp uh, that we used to work at. Yeah, yeah. And I was, it's what is it, 20 mile an hour speed limit there? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was on the verge of 20, right? right. Going past one of the things. And this guy that I've never seen before, uh, but I know where he works. Anyway, I, I've sort of like, I've drove past him and you know me, I've got the, the pickup. Um, and I've drove past, and, and he, he just stared at me, right? As if, you know, with a mouth open, right, as if I was doing a 100 mile an hour wheel <laughs> spinning around. Yeah. And he stared at me, right, and I thought, what? In my, the chimp the chimp was getting hungry at that stage. I thought, <laughs> yeah, What's he feed that looking? bastard. <laughs> yeah, right. So as I've drove past, he has, has then sort of like stared at me as I've gone past. Right? And I checked my rear view mirror and I looked at him and he, and he shook his head, right? And that was it, mate, right? The chimp needed feeding <laughs> so I, I slammed on the anchors mate right slammed on the anchors whacked it into reverse he's still looking at me and i reversed back mate and uh yeah yes, the, head, the head shake angie the head shake <laughs> right so in my head i went i went i'm gonna say who the bloody hell are you yeah what's, yeah. what's your problem are you the bloody police or whatever yeah, yeah. anyway right so I reversed up and window came down i looked at him and i went hey mate 
everything all right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, the he could have gone one of two ways. <laughs> yeah, he could have gone two ways, right? So he could have gone, yeah, actually, blah, 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 right? And then I think it might have gone a different way. But he went, oh, hello, mate. I thought it was you. And I was just shaking my head that you, uh, uh, that you, you didn't. He, he bottled it. He bottled it because he knew you well, fucking Well, that's the thing. So whether he bottled it or whether he was being truthful, I don't know. But I went, no, of course it's me. I knew it was you, but I'm in a, I've got to go and uh, meet someone. <laughs> Uh, so he either bottled it no, or something mate. like that. But he's chatting to me. I ain't got a clue what his name is. I don't think he had a clue who I was. No. He, he, just, he was just there going. Uh, and now, I could have let the chimp out and gone, you know, what are you bloody looking at? You know, looking at me. I'm doing 20 miles an hour, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't. And I played it cool. Hey, mate, everything all right? You know, kill him with kindness. Yeah. And the chimp stayed in its cage. He stayed in his box, mate. He, 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 yeah. The thing is... He, he, we know, a 110% he fucking bottled it. You've confronted, cause nine times out of ten, people will shake their head, they'll give you the fucking fingers until you go, okay mate, well let's have a chat then. <laughs> and unfortunately I do go, naturally go angry. That's my fight or flight, and I'm not a flight person, I'm a full on fight person. I, which is why it's fucking dangerous, that's why I don't like getting to the angry stage, because when I, t- when I flick that switch, it's really, really hard for me to undo that switch. So now I try so hard to not flip that switch oh you're oh, a flight yeah. angie <laughs> i'm not i'm all in i'm i'm fucking throw i'm i'm windmilling <laughs> i'm taking out everybody um <laughs> but he's bottled it but at the same time you got a massive positive out of that you know you kind of you know you, you i've got so many stories that i can say where i they they bottled it and and i've been you know the the other the other guy the difficult guy and i and i, I talk back I, I probably told you the story when i chased that guy for 40 odd miles um, because he undertook me on a, did I ever tell you that story? Yeah. 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 Undertook me on a motorway and, and fucking brake checked me and I followed him 40 miles and I was fucking, and every time we stopped at a junction or a traffic light, I jumped out and I was punching his side window because I really wanted to fucking kill him. And in oh, the end, man. it was only because my heart rate had finally, I, I remember it, I was, like I said, I was going through the country lanes and because I'd lost sight of his car every now and then for the, for the bends, I, I started calming down. But the guy, no, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. Trust me. I laugh my ass off now. I mean, I, you know, uh, but this, the fear on the guy's face that I was so tenacious that I followed him for 40 odd miles and every junction I'm fucking punching. The side. He's in a Range Rover. So I was never putting my finger, finger, fist through one of them, but I was punching the window, the side of his window, looking at him with a sadistic smile going, I'm going to tear your fucking head off, mate. And it was only when I started losing sight of his car that, yeah, I'm fuck, I, I go full crazy, Angie. I go fucking full bot. I literally, I'm all in. And, it, but the face, the fear on this old man's face, because he thought he was just going to, you know, break check me and move on. I was like, oh, no, no, <laughs> mon copy Tom. Nish, fucking, nish. Let's do this, son. <laughs> let's fucking do this. Wherever you're going, son, I'm going. <laughs> and it was only because until, I can't... until you noticed your fuel gauge had gone down. Well, at the time, we are talking. Uh, you know, we are talking three or four years. Oh, well, probably a little bit about five years ago when this happened. So fuel prices weren't astronomical as they are now. So I didn't really mind as much. But at the same yeah. time, I wouldn't have even. It wouldn't have even bothered me, mate, if I'd have had blue smoke out because I'd had low oil. I was fucking. My my focus up was on. And I remember opening his door, trying to open his door. And um, they've obviously, you know, most cars now, they self-lock to stop people like me fucking kicking the shit out of people. Yeah. But yeah. I remember being stood there. And I'm not a small guy. I that's the I, reason that we have the self-lock. I am know, the I exact reason. I am the exact reason. And I remember just standing there going, and I just smiled at him. And I thought, you keep driving, son. I'm fucking, if, if I'm coming to your work for the day, I'm going to sit next to you on your desk and I'm going to make you feel fucking shit. <laughs> and yeah, so... Let me ask you a question then. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Knowing what you know now, do yeah. you still, would you still react that way? And do you still react that absolutely. way? You absolutely. You do? Absolutely. Fuck. Mate, I did it today. I have this oh, switch. No. This is why I don't drive anywhere. I'm a, I, I'll be honest. I'll say yes and a no there. Yes and a no. There's times like today, for instance, I, I wanted to fucking smash the guy's face in because he he basically pulled me into the central reservation. He was an old guy. 
Um, but he it, do you know what? It's it's only when the person, if it was done by mistake, absolutely. If someone puts their hand up and goes, sorry, I didn't see you, no problems at all. I'll know it's a genuine mistake. But when you start fucking, when you start flipping me off, you start fucking getting aggravating me. I go into this mode where I go, do you know what, mate? I'm going to fucking, I'm the guy. You're not the guy. I'm the guy. I'm going to fucking teach you a lesson. And I just go into this completely crazy place where I just want to educate this person that what you are doing is completely and utterly wrong. And I feel that I'm not God because that's the wrong thing to say. But I do feel like I'm the guy that I'm going to teach you a lesson. And that's the way I do it. I just get into this crazy mode. And I remember um, I was uh, there was another incident that was literally about a year later. And um, a, a motorbiker overtook me on a 30 zone and I was doing 30. He clearly wasn't. And bear in mind, I must caveat that with the fact that I am a motor bike rider myself and I do it myself. But because I was in oh, this God. mode, he overtook me doing faster than fucking 30, then pulled into the in front of me. And I went, I'm going to let this guy know. I'm going to educate him that he's doing faster than 30 mile an hour here. Today is your day, sir. And all of a sudden I become the teacher. I followed him onto the camp. We got to the camp gates. I flung my car door open and there was a, obviously the guard force were there with their fucking weapons. I told the guard force, you stand there. You don't say a fucking word. I'm going to educate this guy. I grabbed this guy's fucking helmet. I pulled him towards me and I said to him, you ever do more than 30 fucking mile an hour in a fucking 30 zone again, I'm going to tear your fucking face off. And I looked at him. The guy just looked at me as if to say, have you really just done this? And I looked and I went, if he does it again and anyone sees it again, I'm going to kick his fucking teeth in. <laughs> I got back in my oh, car. Wow. I drove to work. I got out my car. I came out the car like it had never happened. I, I honestly go into this fucking black place. I go into I, I go into this dark place. It just I just feel like I need to teach because all of my car crashes haven't been caused by me. I feel yeah. I do. I got red mist isn't even the fucking word, Angie. I go into a different. I'm not the type of person that, that ever wants to be angry. I, people have seen me go angry and I get my pupils go that dilated that almost all my eyes go black. You can't see much else. I just get into this full because I strive on adrenaline. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't phase me. I, you know, you could be my best friend and I will take you on. I remember Kieran, you know, my mate and we were in Cardiff and somebody grabbed my hair and pulled me aside and I went, I'm going to fucking take it on. I'm going to go through everybody until I get hold of him. So now ah, but you didn't. I know I didn't. didn't. No, I didn't. No, no, because I, I was told and, and I, I brought myself back down. I am getting better and better with this, but that's only the last six months that I've started doing that. And that's because I want to be a better person. I don't want to let mental health define who I am because yeah. you know very well who I am. I'm not a horrible person. I am absolutely the complete and utter opposite. And you, but the thing is, you, you, so your, should we call it road rage? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <come, laughs> you, you have been, you know, you have been affected by, you know, bad drivers. RTAs, RTCs, whatever you want to call them, that's what you've done. It. Whereas, you, I mean, I'm hoping that you know that's probably not the right way to go about it. An old man in a Range Rover, oh. you jumping out, trying to smash his window and put, and you know, and headbutt the guy that is on the motorbike or something. You know that's not. Oh, I know it's wrong. How civilized people should go. <laughs> <laughs> so, whereas I, I very rarely suffer from road rage. Yeah, but I've got a, a good coping mechanism. It will cost you a few quid, but um, good coping mechanism is this. So I drive a big truck, yeah. Yep. But the the horn on my truck is very. I don't know, let's say camp, right? So. Oh, is it? When I get beeped, yeah. When I get beeped, right? Which which occasionally I do. I get beeped, right? I instantly respond with another beep, but it goes instead of you know the the one that goes, goes yeah, and then I press my beep and it goes. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Which, yeah. which which actually makes me laugh do you know what i mean and i'm kind of like right okay that's that you've calmed it down there you've given them a little beat back you've given um, them a little camp, camp beat <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Come> <laughs> so 
the key there is, you know, if someone beeps you, beep back with the, you know, the, the nice, nice return horn. And it, it, it makes me laugh anyway. And I very rarely yeah, get the road rage. Right. And do you know what? I, I remember in one of my therapy sessions and my, my therapist just said, you know, because I do it with everything. I feel that if someone, if, if someone belittles me, I feel that I've got to educate them. If someone fucking does a wrong on me, I feel like I've got to fucking educate them. I'm, I'm getting to the point where I, I, there's no point in doing that because if I did that, I'd, I'd never fucking sleep because I'd be constantly trying to educate people. But yeah, at the same yeah. time, I am getting better. I am, I am getting a lot better. And it, for me, it, I, she always said to me, why do you feel the need to race people? Why do you feel the need to teach people? Why do you follow them? Why don't you just let them go, pull back into your lane and let them fucking crack on? And I go, I don't know. I really like if someone comes tanking up behind me and flashes their lights, I will purposely sit there and and, and almost antagonize them into a situation. that I'm like, no, I'm ready to fucking throw down, mate. I'm ready to fucking I'm ready to go. So let's do this. And if you tell me to pull over, you just fucking you draw it in. You tell me where to go. I'm coming in. But it's a horrible. So, so this is this is where uh, it's kind of contravenes your overthinking. It does. See, for me. So if I'm in the fast lane, someone rams up right behind me, flashes their lights and stuff like that. Right. I'll pull over. No dramas. Because in my head, I go. I, I just picture his missus is in his missus in the back. She's in labor. Yep. And he, the only reason he wants to get past is because, you know, she is about to drop out a little sprog and I just need to get out of the way. No dramas, no thing. But where you, you're going, he's necky. He, he wants a bit necky. of Jimbo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there we go. Just to answer that question, uh, no, I, um, Angie, no, absolutely not. I've got three daughters and, um, you know, they are, they're my life you know and 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 they've endured um almost 10 years of um uh, me not being the best of dads i've turned that round in the last six months um i would never do i never compromise anybody and, and nine times out of ten when i you know when i do you know i just wondered if they if they would stop the red mist in the car um no no and do you know how i know that that wouldn't happen was um Believe it or not, I was in a Ford Galaxy, not the best of the fucking cars in the world, and I was coming into a local town. And this is an interesting story. Great Billy. on petrol, though. Great on mileage. Great on mileage. Great on mileage. But he, I don't even think Billy knows this story, actually. And um, I was in a Ford Galaxy, and I was coming into a 30 zone, and uh, this boy racer fucking wanker in a, in a, in a uh, Vauxhall, um, Volkswagen Golf overtook me on a blind corner into the 30 zone and then banged it in front of me. Now... I instantly on the same blind corner, you're going to say he's a tool. Wait till you hear this fucking extra bit. This is how much of a red mist stroke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, in indeed. This is how much mental health and PTSD ruins you. I then decided in my infinite wisdom to go, well, I'm not in a Ford Galaxy now, people carrier. I'm now in a fucking Porsche 911 Carrera GT. So I fucking, Great choice. I lit, good choice, good choice. I literally banged straight back out into this, into this single lane zone with oncoming traffic on a blind corner, banged it in front of me and stamped on my fucking brakes. Now, luckily he was youth, so he didn't know how to react. I got out the car in my flip flop shorts and vest and he started shitting himself because I, I've got, you know, not saying I'm massive, but you know, I've got that depiction with, you know, beard and tattoos that I don't want to fuck around, but it's not actually, I'm, I'm the big soft teddy bear. <laughs> I, but I ended up running up the fucking hill while he banged it in reverse into oncoming traffic. Luckily there was no behind it's quite a zone. And I fucking literally went, I, I, all I saw was dragging these two boys out their car and beating seven shades of shit out of them with my Ford Galaxy, with my three children in it and my wife sat there. I then got in the car and I then decided, because I know the town very well, to cut him off because I knew where he was going to go. So I burnt it through a 30 zone at about 60. I went through the 30 zone and I knew exactly where he was going to come out on this little roundabout area. And lo and behold, there he was. Now, at the time, I've got my wife screaming, my kids going fucking quiet. This was they were, you know, fairly young at the time. And um, I then decided that now he saw me on the roundabout. So he went round the roundabout and then I decided that I was going to get hold of him. Now, I went through the centre of this town in the 30 zone at 60, 70 mile an hour with the kids in the car. 
I traversed across uh, a roundabout without even thinking about it because that's what he was doing. He was hell bent on getting away. He knew I was going to rip his fucking face off. And then I went through two red lights. And the only thing that stopped me following him any further was my Ford Galaxy big old bus started to overheat. Yeah, holy shit indeed. Now I stood there and I, 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 when I realized the car was overheating and I didn't want to cause myself more problems with regards to, um, you know, uh, the, the mechanical issues and the, the money that it was going to financially cost me, I then decided that what I'm going to do is, um, go back home. So go and see my parents because that's where we were going. Now, I then calmed down. The red mist has started to descend and I started to get a little bit of feeling back in my parameter. And um, I looked around and there was my missus absolutely fucking terrified. And I looked at her and I went, what's your problem? (laughs) That's what I said. What's the problem? I wanted to teach him a lesson. And I never apologized. I just saw that as I wanted to fucking teach this kid not to put me in jeopardy. And in actual fact, I was doing the complete opposite and putting more people in jeopardy because I wanted to teach this little shit But I didn't think about that. So since that day, absolutely not. Would never do it again. And it does ground me with the children in. I do tend. But then what we tend to do now is we've got the kids in the car. I don't tend to drive. The missus drives because she's a lot more. So what I tend to do now is the coping mechanism I have is I pull my mobile phone out and watch fucking little videos or I play computer games. (laughs) And uh, and she and she drives. Hey, darling. What would, what would have been the perfect end to that story is if um, is if once you finally pulled over, a guy in a motorbike pulls up next to you and grabs you by the head and says, "If I ever catch you doing yes. thirty miles an hour, <laughs> <laughs> if I ever catch you doing more than thirty in a third, I'm gonna rip your face off." <laughs> and I'd have gone touche, sir, touche, yeah, touche. <laughs> but no, it's it's yeah, he's like Uncle Buck. <laughs> but it is interesting how you know. Mental health is crazy. It's a fucking. Uh, do you know what? I can't. Even when I re- I review these 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 things and these things that have happened in my past, it's crazy how I don't get to define what it does to me. And even now, I don't get to choose. I, it just it just consumes you. It, it's it's the only thing I can do. And the people I genuinely care about is is the likes of yourself and. And, and my other close friends is I sit there and I just apologize and that's all I can do. And if the more open and honest I am, the more I'm hoping that, you know, I get better. I hope people will see an improvement in me um, and just hopefully get just just challenge myself constantly not to do these things. You do apologize a lot, mate. I won't won't even lie to you. And, it, you know, of course, it's warranted sometimes because one, it makes you feel better. And two, it lets the other person know that you are sorry, r- yeah. better than, you know, saying nothing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like I said a, a minute ago, it's you have got you are you've got these people around you, mate, that get it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's being conscious. I don't want them to get it. I don't want to, this to be. I hate saying sorry because I know if I'm saying sorry, it normally means I've done something negative because you don't say sorry unless you say something negative. I don't want it to become the norm. I don't want to keep saying sorry. And the only way I can do that. And, and the reason I came on this podcast today was purely because and so early was because of such a positive day. All right. We had that little heated bit on the on the motorway, but there was a massive positive to that. I didn't pull him off into the side and try and fucking kick the shit out of him. I just motored on. But for me, it's about getting better. I want to get to the point where I don't have to say sorry and it just becomes the norm. And because I get, I feel that guilty when I do let people down. Hence the reason why when I came round to see you the day before you left, or it was on the day you were leaving actually. Yeah. Um, glad you did. Been really interesting listening. Thanks Angie. Absolutely amazing. And I really appreciate your support as well. It's, it's absolutely incredible. And hopefully we've, you know, we've we've given you a little insight into the crazy world of the male mind as well as uh, as well as the crazy world of mental health, as you well know by the sound of things. Angie's got well involved today. That is awesome. I know. It's really engaging. I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get to the point where I have to do that. And and you know, coming around and seeing you just before you go, it was like my way of saying I don't want to. I don't want you to fuck off and and think that that was the way I left it. Um, I'm a very good friend of mental health, believe me. I know, and, and we've, we we all battle it. Um, and I, like I say, it's 
it's getting to the point where we can make the differences. And and, and although I came round with the champagne, the flowers and had a chat, it, it wouldn't have it wasn't the, the, the send off I wanted. It wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, it was just the only way I could do it personally. Well, you were wearing clothes for a start. You know, I know. That kind of, I'm, I'm normally naked, things. mate. <laughs> <laughs> Get the old tally wackle out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit of fun knowing it you know what i mean but it's it's you know it's I, i'm trying to get to the point and i think that the, the positive side today was i challenged myself and sometimes planning isn't the right thing i mean you have to plan to a degree because if you're traveling somewhere you need to plan um but at the same time not planning too much do you know what i mean because it does if you've got a mental health condition you will look for the negatives and the ways to get out of it because you just worry and, and so I'll, maybe then, maybe then, from today's experience, where they put you, they put you under pressure there and then, and you performed and you maxed out and you loved it, and you've come back with a real positive spin on things. Maybe we could then try, you know, Kieran and um, oh uh, Nelly, Nelly the Batman, yep, um, could try a bit of spontaneity, like James, we're going out. Half an hour. Get ready. And do you know what, mate? I've I've said that, and and uh, you know, and and I have said to. I think the problem is, you know, Kieran's quite laid back. He's absolutely laid back. He's one of these guys that if I plan anything, he's a he's a he's a yes guy. He will a hundred percent come along for the journey, but tends to struggle a little bit with the spontaneity side of things because he'd rather be chilled uh, out, okay. relaxing. Nelly, on the other hand, yeah, would probably be engaging a little bit as well. So maybe, it, well, hopefully they'll listen to this and and. Um, you know, they'll get some they might get some uh, information from it and some inspiration. Uh, I know for a fact that, you know, you're the type of guy that would be would would be all on board with that if you were still local. Um, so when you come back, that will be something, you know, in, in whenever you come back, that'll be something we can hopefully have built on. And we shouldn't get to the yeah. point where that becomes a problem anyway. I mean, you know, that'll be we're talking a couple of years down the line. So hopefully with the journey that we're on here, um, you know, it just gets better and better. Yeah, Rog, man. Rog, I get it. So that is an hour. I've just had my tea presented to me, <laughs> which is absolutely fantastic. Um, so, yeah. What do you want to do, mate? Do you want to do you want to carry on? So, mate, I've still got some uh, work to do. I kind of just sat here uh, watching the emails roll in. Oh, uh, lovely. So I'm going to. I'm going to chip off because I've got to get back to my wife as well and, and you know, take the dogs out for a walk. Yeah, uh, that's what I've got to do. He's gagging for it. And I still haven't seen Top Gun yet. Have still you not? haven't seen it. No, no. And I'm dying to see it. And I keep I keep saying, yeah, we'll go, we'll go. In fact, tonight, do you know what I'm meant to be doing? I'm meant to be cooking on a barbecue. And I haven't even sorted anything out. So um, wow. let me, I'm going to chip off, mate. It's yep. been great talking to you. And um, I am going to... Just crack on with these emails and get home, mate. Yeah, crack on with these emails. I'll message you tonight anyway, mate. I'll give you some shit. And, um, but uh, do you know what, mate? Um, absolutely. Thank you very much. It's supposed to be pretty good. It is, it is amazing. It is amazing. Um, I, I really appreciate you coming on and talking. It always spurs me along to, uh, to talk and have the banter. And, um, I, I look forward to doing more of these, mate. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you, Angie. Um, thanks, Angie. Thanks for the support. I think Woody joined on as well. Thanks, Woody, for joining on. Um, he's a good listener. I like him. We spoke last time. Um, Angie, yeah, thank you. You've been absolutely amazing. Follow us and jump on board. We'll have to have a chat soon. Um, it would be absolutely amazing to just sort of hear some of your stories and see if we can offer some advice or even just take some tips on how you manage it. Yeah, thank you. That would be, that'd be incredible. Give a little spin, a little diverse sort of opinion to the men. You know, we we do we do things wrong and... Everyone else seems to do things right, but um, but at the same time we learn from each other, don't we? Anyway, Billy, you're off, mate. So um, thanks very much. Absolutely, Andy. Yeah, I look forward to it. Follow along, and I'll follow you. And um, yeah, we'll we'll get something built in when we're next on live. Just jump on and uh, and we'll have a chat. But I really appreciate the support. It's absolutely incredible. Hopefully, we've made you smile for this afternoon as well. 